Okay. So, now we will study that single phase transformer of go ahead line it is written as transformers, but we will study single phase transformers only and uh, after this we will see that your three phase induction machine only in brief and then uh, the DC machine mainly DC motor right. So, generally if you look at the this thing a transformer is a device which uses the phenomenon of mutual inductance to change the values of alternating voltages and current right. So, basically in a transformer that one of the main advantages is that that it can transform the voltage level that is it can increase the voltage level or it can or what you call decrease the voltage level. So, this is actually what you have the transformer right. So, it can uh, your what you call for example, many so when you look at the your power station, transmission line, distribution line there are different voltage level and those voltage steps are or steps up or step down only by using your what you call the transformers right. So, that means therefore, the transformer is a device which uses the phenomena of mutual inductance uh, mutual induction to change the values of alternating voltage and current right. So, losses in transformer are your generally low and therefore, efficiency of the transformer is very high losses we will see later. So, being static they have a long life and are very stable. So, transformer is a static device. So, now for example, suppose if you consider your what you call a ferromagnetic core and you have your you have your primary this side we call primary side say you have n, n 1 number of turns here it is n 1 number of turns and you have the secondary you have n 2 number of turns and in the secondary load is also connected, but shown is dash line that means load say when load is not connected. Now, an alternating supply voltage say V 1 is given right. So, when load is actually not connected, so what will happen is very small current right will flow through this your what you call through this primary side of the winding and we and the flux will link actually both the primary as well as the secondary winding when this side is your what you call open circuited right. That means, load is not connected. So, no current is flowing through the your what you call secondary, but primary side you have applied your small voltage right. So, small current called exciting current will be responsible actually for your producing the flux and direction of the flux you will get the magnetic circuit the right hand rule I told you in the direction of the current you grasp the your what you call coil and your thumb will put the your what you call the direction of the flux right. So, let me clear it. So, this is actually ferromagnetic core and this is your the your circuit symbol of a transformer. So, primary winding is connected to AC supply I told you and secondary winding may be connected to a load. Now, principles of, of principle of operation when the secondary is an open circuit and an alternating voltage V 1 is applied I told you to the primary winding a small current called low load current that is I 0 flows right which sets up a magnetic flux in the core that means, here it will set up the magnetic uh, suppose the small current here it is showing I 1 because it is primary side we are putting V 1 voltage I 1 current, but here it is I 0 current when it is a no load right at the time I 1 is equal to say I 0 and your which sets up a magnetic flux in the core. This alternating flux links with both primary and the secondary coils right that I told you and induces in them an EMF of E 1 and E 2 respectively by mutual induction. That means, here a actually here a volt this is supply voltage anyway for an ideal transformer a voltage will be induced say if I make it like this it is E 1 right, but at that time we have to see uh, you know different way that this uh, winding also has your resistance as well as that your what you call reactance right. So, we will see later. So, let me let me clear it. So, in that case your that your E 1 and E 2 respectively by mutual induction. So, the induced E M A P in a coil if you have n turns is given by E is equal to minus n d phi by d t. So, from the Faraday's law the voltage induced thing is n d phi by d t and Lenz your what you call Lenz law will give you the uh, your direction of the E M F. 
So, that is why minus sign is here. So, following assumptions are made for an ideal transformer. Winding resistance say are negligible, say there is no winding resistance. All the flux produced is confined to the core of the transformer and links fully both the windings. There is no leakage of the flux. We are assuming there is no leakage and the flux links both the winding fully. Number, number 3, the permeability of the core is very high, right, so that the magnetizing current required to produce the flux and establish it in the core is negligible, right. And number 4, that is D part, hysteresis and eddy current losses are negligible. These are the, these are the 4 assumptions we have made, right. So, these are the 4 assumptions we have made for an ideal transformer. Now, in an ideal transformer, d psi by d t is same for both primary and secondary winding because the flux phi linking both primary and secondary winding. So, E 1 is equal to we can write minus N 1 d phi by d t that is the induced voltage in the winding. Similarly, E 2 is equal to minus N 2 d phi by d t and we are resist we are neglecting your what you call the ideal transformer the your resistance is neglected. Now, therefore, if you divide E 1 by E 2, you will get N 1 by N 2. Therefore, if you divide these two equations E 1 by E 2, you will get N 1 by N 2. Therefore, E 1 upon N 1 is equal to E 2 by N 2 that is induced m f per turn in is constant that is E 1 by N 1 is equal to E 2 by N 2. Now, polarity of the induced m f is given by Lenz law actually it opposes the change hence it is actually negative right. From your high secondary physics you have gone all through this right. So, assuming that no losses therefore, we can make V 1 by, by N 1 is equal to V 2 by N 2. So, in, in that case if we assume that there is no loss then we can make V 1 upon V 1 by V 2 is equal to your N 1 upon N 2. Here it is here it is E 1 upon E 2 is equal to N 1 upon N 2 right and if there is no loss we assume there is no loss then we can write that uh, your term supplied voltage that is V 1, V 1 by N 1 is equal to V 2 by N 2. This is primary side voltage and V 2 is the secondary side voltage. Therefore, we can make V 1 by V 2 is equal to N 1 by N 2 is equal to K that is called trans ratio. Therefore, K is the voltage ratio or trans ratio or transformation ratio. Therefore, V 2 is equal to V 1 upon K. If K less than 1 then it is called step up transformer and if k your greater than 1 it is called step down transformer. So, let us go back to that your uh, circuit again here, here let us go back to the circuit again. So, we are assuming there is no loss right. So, in j in, and this is side is voltage V 1 this side is voltage V 2 that means, this is this is if it if it is mark that this is my E 1 and here also it is my E 2, we are assuming there is no loss. Therefore, your V 1 by your U 1 by E 2 is equal to N 1 by N 2. So, is equal to your V 1 by V 2 is equal to N 1 by N 2. Later we will see the relationship between V 1 and E 1 similarly here. So, we will we'll be here only right. So, if k less than 1 that is step up transformer, if k greater than 1 that is step down transformer. For example, for example, suppose suppose say n 1 is equal to say 50 right and n 2 is equal to say your 100 right 50 turns and 100 turns. Then k is equal to n 1 by n 2 is equal to 50 by 100 is equal to half that means, k less than 1 that is if that is your k less than 1 because it is half that means, it is step up transformer. Uh, why it is step up transformer? That means, here then V 1 upon V 2 is equal to k is equal to half right. That means, V 2 is equal to 2 into V 1 right. That means, it is step up transformer because primary side voltage if it is V 1 secondary side it is becoming 2 into V 1. For example, primary side if it is 100 kV, then secondary side it is 200 kV. So, it is a step up transformer if k less than 1. Similarly, for if k greater than 1, then it will be step down transformer, right. So, 
that is k greater than 1 for step down transformer. Now, when a load is connected across the secondary winding, a current I 2 flows, right. So, in an ideal transformer, loss whenever I am telling this, first you draw those circuit diagram in the beginning, right, that ferromagnetic material, the core, the winding, first you draw it. Then you see this, when a load is connected across the secondary winding, a current I 2 flows, in an ideal transformer, losses are neglected and the transformer is considered to be 100 percent efficient, right. Although in reality ideal transformer is not possible, but for the sake of our clarification. Now, hence the primary and secondary volt amperes will be equal that is V 1 into I 1 must be equal to V 2 into I 2 that is V 1 actually is your primary side voltage and I 1 is the primary side current and V 2 is the secondary side voltage and I 2 is the secondary side current. Therefore, their volt ampere must be same that is V 1 I 1 is equal to V 2 I 2. Therefore, V 1 by V 2 is equal to I 2 by I 1. So, V 1 by V 2 is you know N 1 by N 2. So, is equal to I 2 by I 1 is equal to N 1 by N 2 is equal to k. Therefore, either you can write V 1 by V 2 is equal to N 1 by N 2 or in the case of current it will be I 2 by I 1 is equal to N 1 by N 2 that is N 1 I 1 is equal to N 2 I 2 right. So, that means, MMF on the I mean if you if you later will see it will be different way. Suppose, if it is I 2 by I 1 is equal to your N 1 by N 2 go for cross multiplication. Therefore, I 2 N 2 is equal to your I 1 N 1 right. Therefore, MMF on the secondary side must be equal to the MMF on the primary side right. So, the rating of a transformer is stated in terms of the volt ampere that it can transform without your overheating. So, this way we make it that volt ampere. Now, transformer rating is either V 1 I 1 or V 2 I 2, when I 2 is the full load say secondary current. So, this is actually transformer rating. Generally, on the transformer name plate you will find its K V A rating will be given, right, its frequency will be given, per unit impedance will be given, all these things will be given. So, just to whatever little bit we have studied, we will come to phasor diagram other thing later you take a small example, an ideal transformer has a trans ratio of 8 is to 1 and the primary current is 3 ampere, it is given. When it is supplied at 240 volt, calculate the secondary voltage and the current, right. So, now trans ratio is given 8 is to 1 means it is N 1 is to N 2, I mean whenever it is given that 8 is to 1 that means it is N 1 is to N 2 is equal to 8 is to 1. So, n 1 by n 2 is equal to 8 by 1 is equal to k. So, k is equal to 8 that means, it is a step down transformer because k greater than 1 right. So, that means, v 1 by v 2 is equal to k therefore, v 2 is equal to v 1 upon k. So, 240 by 8. So, v 2 will be 30 volt. So, primary side is 240 volt, secondary side is 30 volt. Also, we know that I 2 by I 1 is equal to k. So, I 2 is equal to k into I 1, it is given I 1 is equal to 3 ampere. So, I 2 is equal to 24 ampere. So, interestingly if you see this side it is your 30 volt right, Vol voltage is low, but the at the same time current has increased because volt ampere has to remain your same. So, if you see the volt ampere primary side 240 volt into 3 ampere current, so 720 volt ampere right. Similarly, for the your secondary side, if you look into in the look into the second side, the secondary side also has to be 72. So, if you see this voltage is your uh, this uh, voltage is your V2 is 30 volt and this is 24 ampere. So, that is also 720 volt ampere right. So, that means, V1 I1 it has to be equal to V2 I2 right. Now, another small example. So, a 5 kVA single phase one it is 1 phi source actually single phase. Single phase transformer has a trans ratio 10 is to 1 that is n 1 is to n 2 is equal to 10 is to 1 and is fed from a 2.5 kV supply 2.5 kilo volt right. So, neglecting losses determine a the full load secondary current b the minimum load resistance which can be connected across the secondary winding to give full load kVA and see the primary current at full load k v a. So, 
So, these are the these are the things have been asked to so, uh, your do it. So, first thing is that n 1 by n 2 is equal to 10 is to 1 10 by 1 is equal to 10. Now, V 1 is given 2.5 kV. So, 2500 volt multiply by 1000. We know it since n 1 by n 2 is equal to V 1 by V 2 therefore, V 2 is equal to V 1 into n 2 upon n 1 right is equal to V 1 is given 2500 and n 2 by n 1 is 1 upon 10. So, it is 250 volt right. So, V 2 is the 250 volt. The transformer rating in volt ampere will be V 2 I 2 at full load right. So, it is V 2 is equal to your uh, V 2 I 2 is uh, that is K B is given 5000. I mean this is something like this. So, transformer rating at full volt ampere is equal to V 2 I 2. So, this 5 K B is given. So, 5 into 1000 volt ampere is equal to V 2 is 250 volt we got V 2 is equal to 250 volt into I 2 from which if you solve we will get I 2 is equal to 20 ampere the full load current. So, K B A it is given in the problem it is given 5 K B A that means 5000 volt ampere is equal to voltage is 250 volt here and current you have to determine. So, from which you will get I 2 is equal to 20 ampere. Now, B is minimum value of load resistance. So, R L is equal to just V 2 by I 2. So, V 2 is given 250, we got 250 and I 2 got 20. So, it is 12.5 ohm. C is N 1 by N 2 is equal to I 2 by I 1, we know that. Therefore, I 1 is equal to I 2 into N 2 by N 1. So, I 2 we got 20 ampere and N 2 by N 1 is 1 upon 10. So, it is actually 2 ampere, right. So, very simple, very simple. Now, next is no load phasor diagram. Now, the core flux actually no load phasor diagram, the core flux is common to both primary and secondary windings in a transformer that I showed you in the beginning and this thus taken as the reference phasor in a phasor diagram. For example, in a phasor diagram this is the flux right, we will assume we will assume that phi is equal to say so sinusoidal variation phi m sin omega t right, this is your phi, phi m sin omega t this is the flux and we are taking the your phi as a reference. Now, I 0 is still small no load current and loss is neglected right. So, primary winding then will be a pure inductor because we are giving alternating supply to the primary winding. So, if our loss is neglected so it will act like your what you call that a pure inductor. So, in that case what will happen that whenever whenever you say that uh, as per your what you call as per Lenz law right, we know that u 1 u 1 is equal to minus for the primary winding it is n 1 right. So, into d phi by d t right, this minus sign comes because of the Lenz law right. So, this is u 1 is equal to minus n 1 d phi by d t. Now, if we know phi is equal to phi max sin omega t. So, if you just take the derivative of that then you will you will get u 1 is equal to minus n 1 then phi m then omega then your cosine omega t right that much that you will get. So, this one you can write that your minus n 1 phi m say omega this is cosine omega t. So, we can write sin 90 degree minus omega t and this minus sign is here, this minus sign is here, you take minus side inside that then what you will get that u 1 is equal to your n 1 then phi m then omega right, then you can write sin omega t minus 90 degree. So, sin omega t minus 90 that is u 1 right, that means if phi is equal to the reference that is your sin omega t right and it is a loss is neglected therefore, that no load current I 0 also will be in phase with your uh, what you call in uh, your what you call with the flux right and I 0 actually will lagging from your V 1 by your 90 degree. If loss is neglected, if it is loss is completely neglected right. So, in that case I 0 will be in phase with phi and your as it is a, as resistance is neglected. So, generally that I uh, your therefore, the I 0 is lagging from the voltage V 1 by 90 degree. It is because because that primary winding is acting as a pure inductor right and if you take the magnetizing we call magnetizing reactance right x m 
then you will see that I 0 is purely if R is neg I mean, I mean loss is neglected, then this I 0 and phi both are in phase and lagging from V 1 by 90 degree. So, so in this case that U 1 is equal to is coming omega t minus 90 degree and that means, phi is equal to phi m sin omega t and here it is sin omega t minus 90 degree that means, so I am clearing it right. So, that means, my E 1 will be your what you call lagging from phi by 90 degree therefore, this is my E 1 this is my E 1 the primary induced EMF. Similarly, E 2 also will be the same way E 2 also will be lagging and E 2 is equal to V 2 because loss you are what you call we are it, we are considering an ideal transformer right. So, e, so this is your secondary induced EMF both will be like this. Now, therefore, the supply voltage from the Lenz's law is it opposes the change right. So, Lenz's law Lenz's law it is actually V 1 is equal to minus E 1 right. So, and E 1 is equal to minus n d psi by d t that means, my V 1 will be n it is in general it n 1 your uh, your what you call d psi by d t because u 1 is equal to minus n 1 d psi by d t. So, minus minus plus it will be n d psi by d t therefore, my v 1 will be is equal to n 1 phi is equal to phi m your what you call sin omega t if you take the derivative it will be n 1 then phi m then omega right then cos omega t right. So, that is that will be your what you call V 1. So, if you if you your what you call this cos omega t if you write like this uh, for your just understanding if you write like this somewhere I am writing hope you will be able to read it that your V your V 1 is equal to your n 1 then phi m then omega and this is cos omega t two way you can write one is sin 90 degree minus omega t another is your sin 90 degree plus omega t that means, we can write sin your omega t plus 90 degree right that is my V 1 that means, this is my phi phi is equal to phi m sin omega t that means, this V 1 actually leading this phi by 90 degree so, and V 1 is equal to minus E 1. So, this is my your E 2 this is E 1 and this is your V 1 is equal to minus E 1. So, that then E 1 is the primary induced EMF and V 2 is the say your E 2 is equal to V 2 is equal to secondary induced EMF. So, this is actually V 1 is equal to minus E 1. So, basically your I 0 will be in phase your loss is neglected with the your in phase with your what you call with the flux phi, phi is the taken as a reference right. Therefore, let me clear it. Therefore, I 0 produces the flux and in the phase with the flux. Now, the primary induced EMF E 1 is in phase opposition to V 1 by Lenz law and is shown 180 degree out of phase with V 1. So, this is E 1 and this is V 1 is equal to minus E 1. So, 180 degree out of phase. So, this is Lenz law and this Faraday's all these things you have studied in your high secondary physics right. So, this is how that you are when we are not considering the losses. So, this is the phasor diagram. Now, generally what happens? in a transformer that heating heating of the core happens because of your what you call that energy losses due to your uh, hysteresis and eddy currents right flows in the core. So, because of that some loss component will be there if you consider the loss component then I 0 actually is not exactly lagging 9 from 90 degree from V 1 or not exactly is in phase with phi 1 there will be some lagging angle of I 0. So, so that is why your whenever whenever you have such thing right that to in this in this case what will happen that I your your this uh, I 0 actually not exactly in phase in phase with I right because it has some core loss that is iron loss that is eddy current and hysteresis loss. So, because of that your this is V 1 is equal to minus E 1 is ok, but this I 0 actually lagging by an angle phi 0 from V 1. So, this angle is phi 0 and it is your what you call its component along phi is I m is equal to your I 0 sin phi this component is responsible for producing that your no load flux because this is phi 0. So, it is cos 90 your what you call that I your I 0 is equal your I m is equal to I 0 right it will be cos 90 minus phi 0. So, it is I 0 sin phi and this I c will be I 0 cos phi 0 
right. So, this component actually basically it will give your coal loss or iron loss at the no load condition right. So, so total coal, coal losses is equal to basically iron losses is hysteresis and eddy current losses. So, that is why I, I 0 is not exactly is in phase with phi, but this this angle actually this angle I phi 0 actually quite large. So, that is total coal loss is equal to iron loss is equal to V 1 I 0 cos phi 0 right and this and the I told you this I 0 cos phi 0 that is I c actually is equal to I 0 cos phi 0 that means this component that means I 0 cos phi 0 actually is equal to your I c that means V 1 into I c that is your total coal loss or iron loss right. So, this is the no load phasor diagram for a practical transformer. Now, if current flows, the losses will occur when losses are considered, I 0 has to two components. I told you everything. I m we call the magnetizing component and I c the coal loss component. This magnetizing component at no load is responsible for producing the flux. So, eddy current loss that coal loss component basically is supplying eddy current and hysteresis losses. This eddy current and hysteresis in the magnetic circuit, I have given you those formulas, right. So, this is nothing, this is nothing, uh, this is nothing later will come right. So, now this is for this numerical a 2400 by 400 volt, it is a step down transformer because this is primary side 2400, the secondary side the 400 volt. So, this is a step down transformer right. So, n 1 by n 2 actually is equal to 6 because v 1 by v 2 single phase transformer takes a no load current of 0 0.5 ampere and the coal loss is 400 watt that is coal loss is given that is V 1 your I 0 cos phi 0 that is your coal loss 400 watt is given. Determine the value of the values of the magnetizing and coal loss component of the no load current and draw the phasor diagram. So, it is given V 1 is equal to 2400 volt, V 2 is given 400 volt. I 0 is given 0 0.5 ampere. So, core loss that is iron loss is equal to also given 400 watt. Therefore, V 1 I 0 cos phi 0 is equal to 400. So, that is 2400 into 0 0.5 cos phi 0 is equal to 400. Therefore, we will get cos phi 0 is equal to 1 third. Therefore, phi 0 is equal to 70.5 degree. Now, magnetizing current I m will be 0 point at I 0 sin phi 0. So, 0.471 ampere because phi 0 is equal to 70.5 degree and coal loss component I c I 0 will be 0.167 ampere right. And as this current is lagging if you write in your phasor thing that your I 0 will be equal to actually I c minus j I m right. So, I c is equal to 0.167 and minus your j 0 0.471 right. Uh, if you take your V 1 as a reference, so this current actually lagging from your what you call the voltage. So, it will be minus sign right, this is your real part and this is your imaginary part, this is coal loss component current and this is your imaginary loss, your sorry magnetizing, your call that imaginary part is a magnetizing component of the current. So, now this is the phasor diagram, this is your, this is your V 1 and this is your E 2 is equal to 400 volt, E E 1 is also here and this angle is 70.5 degree and this is your this part is I C and this part this part is your I M and this is the resultant current I 0 right. So, this is a simple and this is the phi the reference phasor right and E 1 is given here E 1 is given here 2400 because it has to be balanced ideal case it has to be balanced right. So, it is 204 volt here also it is showing 2400 volt right. Now, EMF equation these two equations also in the magnetic circuit in general I have given E 1 is equal to 4.44 F phi m n 1 volt and in the secondary side also 4.44 F phi m n 2 volts right. So, n 1 n 2 only terms difference are different, but equations are same right. So, this EMF equation this is given actually in that magnetic circuit I have given. And if you take the RMS value, you have to divide it what you call 
uh, that your uh, uh, in the, that your what you call in that uh, magnetic circuit that divided by root 2 everything has been done there right. So, now if you take this example a single phase 500 by 1000 volt 50 hertz then it is also a step down transformer because voltage is getting reduced on the secondary side has a magnet maximum core flux density is 1.5 OA bar per meter square and on effective core, your cross sectional area area of 50 centimeter square determine n 1 and n 2 a very simple one. You know flux is equal to B into A, you have seen in the magnetic circuit this is B is the flux density and A is the cross sectional area. So, B is given 1.5 OA bar per meter square and A is 50 centimeter square. So, 50 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter square therefore, phi m is equal to 1.5 into this uh, your area is equal to 75 into 10 to the power minus 4 OA bar. Since u 1 is equal to 4.44 phi m n 1 we know that therefore, n 1 will be u 1 upon 4.44 a phi m that will be 500 divided by u substitute and, and the if even it is not mentioned even it is not mentioned right generally you take it is a 50 hertz system a p is equal to 50 hertz. So, that is a p is equal to 50 hertz is taken and this is the phi m right. So, you will get n 1 is equal to 300. Similarly, similarly n 2 is equal to e 2 upon 4.44 a phi m that is 100 upon 4.44 50 hertz a p is 50 hertz and this one you will get 60. So, basically you will get n 1 is equal to 300 and n 2 is equal to 60 in, in uh, your what you call we even without using this without using this if voltage ratio is given your what you call v 1 upon v 2 is given your uh, this is your v 1 upon v 2 is equal to say n 1 upon n 2 right and in uh, and this is given actually 500 by 100 that will be 5. So, you have got n 1 we got n 1 we got is 300 therefore, n 2 we, we is equal to your 300 by 5 here from here also you can get it n 2 is equal to 60 right. So, this is your n 2 is equal to 60. So, uh, thank you very much, we will be back again.